right y'all welcome back to rabbit ridge outdoors today's episode we're talking about ultra compact hunting and fishing kits that can be carried under your truck seat or in a small bag at the end of this video we'll be doing a review over the chapel little badger which is my choice for these kits so it's going to be fun y'all stick around now survival is an art and not a science so there's no right or wrong way to put these kits together but there is a model to be followed and that's to keep it as lightweight and versatile as possible. These kits are to be fine tuned for the situations you're likely to come across. Since I do a lot of creek fishing, I carry lures like hair jigs for crappie, tube jigs, basic catfishing tackle, spoons, rooster tails are great options for creek fishing. And I also come across some stock ponds here and there and I carry weightless Texas rig hooks, and an assortment of soft plastics. Now, I've always thought these telescopic fishing poles were more of a novelty, but they have impressed me, and they're a lot more durable than I thought. I've caught some big bass off of this one, and as long as you take care of it, they hold up pretty well. Now, the most important thing about these fishing kits is to have good tackle in there, because when it's time to use this, you want it to work, and you want it to work well. The fishing side of this kit's pretty standard and isn't going to change much person to person. Now the firearm side of this can be a deep dark rabbit hole. For this kit I chose a Chiapa Little Badger in 22 long rifle. I like it because to me it's very practical and it folds down to be 18 inches long and a little over 8 inches wide. Now there's many other options out there. You have Henry's AR7, you have the kel foldable carbines and pistol calibers. Chiapa also offers many other pack rifles. And if you want to take it to another level, Rossi also has breakover guns with different barrels. They take up more room, but are definitely more usable. So on to the Chiapa Little Badger review. All in all, it's a pretty good gun for the money. It's uh, definitely a cheaper end firearm, so it does have some problems. But for a pack rifle, it's a, it's a very good choice. So there's two different models of the Chapa Little Badger. This is the tactical style version with the skeletal stock. And they also have one with the wooden furniture. But for a pack rifle, I think this is more useful. I guess we'll start on this side of the gun. And we have a shell holder that some reviews say they do not hold shells very well. Mine holds them pretty well, but I don't leave shells in there while it's collapsed or in storage because they do have a tendency to fall out. Now, this is a Browning Spur, that blade right there, and it fits perfectly in between the skeletal stock. So with some zip ties, you can keep it there. And that's, uh, that's a pretty handy thing to have on your rifle. I also have roughly 100 foot of tarred bank line wrapped around it. Just something handy to have there. Now, this Picatinny rail is not compatible with anything. Chiapa put that on there to give it a tactical look, but they found out for many reviews and many complaints to the company, people trying to get a pistol grip on there, that Chiapa actually built a specialty pistol grip that fits on that rail. And I'm thinking about adding that to this gun. I'm not quite sure yet. Now, this is the release to break over the barrel really simple and i like how this does not have a spring loaded ejector the ejector works off of breaking the rifle over so that's another one less component to fail on you as for the lock and everything the hammer system it's just like any other breakover gun now it does have the m14 style sights and i really like that even though they're made out of polymer and they chitched out a little bit on it they're still good sights and i highly recommend highly highly recommend that after you sight this in you put jb weld or some kind of epoxy on these sights so they will not move the turn knob for your windage it stays it stays pretty true but that little dovetail notch in that peep sight likes to move around so after you get that adjusted the way you like it should be epoxy down. Now, we have four, four Picatinny rails, and these are compatible. 
with any uh, aftermarket accessory. If you take the bottom Picatinny rail off, the rifle will fold up into a smaller package, which is uh, pretty useful. Now, this pin right here, you can pull that and replace it with a pin and a cotter pin, and you can use it as a quick release and break down the gun even further. And that's pretty handy. I've seen people do that. You can put the gun in a much smaller, much smaller area. And I'm thinking about doing that with this one. Now onto the front side, you have the same problem with this. I don't know how they attached that, that front side. I'm not real happy with that. It has a little bit of play. And that's something else that you probably want to put a little bit of JB Weld on. But I'm very happy that they did put a threaded, uh, a threaded muzzle on there. And it works very well with the suppressor and subsonics. All in all, it's a very good gun for the money. Uh, I believe MSRP on it's around $190, $200. And it's a very serviceable gun. And if you're building small compact kits, it's a very good option. Now in conclusion, the beauty of this gun is how simple its construction is. There's very few moving parts. That means this gun can get absolutely filthy and still work. And it's fairly accurate even for having the 16 inch barrel. The only negative thing I have to say about it is the sights, they are poor quality. But some epoxy or JB Weld will fix that. So my goal is to make y'all the best and most informative videos as I can. So if y'all found this helpful or have any suggestions for upcoming videos, y'all be sure and leave me a comment. That's gonna be it for me today. So y'all take care, appreciate y'all watching.